Question four. So we've got a network and it says that figure three represents a network of roads. The number on each arc represents the length in miles uh, of the corresponding road. Liz wishes to travel from S to T. So she wishes to travel from S to T. It says, use Dijkstra's algorithm to find the shortest path from S to T, state your path and its length. So you must do two things at the end. Now they always give you um, a diagram for you to fill in for a Dijkstra's algorithm question. So we're going to go down to this, which is down here. So let's do a Dijkstra's algorithm on here. You start at S. That's your um, first one you've labelled, and zero means that there's no distance between S and the start, obviously. Now, from the one you've just labelled, you go and go in every direction you can from here. So it goes to there in a possible of 8. It goes to there in a possible of uh, 17. And it goes to there in a possible of 9. Okay? So what you do is you pick the smallest out of 8, 17 and 9, which is clearly this one. So you label this permanently, your second permanent one, and it's 8 to get to there. Now what you do is from this one, you go in every direction that you can, now, apart from going back on yourself via this path here. So 8 add the 4 would give you a working value of 12. 8 add the 7 would give you a working value of 15, which is better than 17. And that's the only two places you can go. So now you look at every one that's not permanently labelled. So the smallest of 9, 15 and 12 is 9. So you permanently label this number 3 and it's got a distance of 9. Now from here you go in every direction you can. So you go up in 4, 9 add 4 is going to be 13. So you write that there. 9 add 14 is going to be equal to 23. You can't go back on yourself here. So now you look at all the ones that aren't permanently labelled. The smallest of 13, 12 and the 23 is 12. So this is going to be your fourth one and you're going to label it 12. Now you go from this one now, the permanently labelled, in every direction you can. So 12 at 9 is 21, which you write here. 12 at 16 is 28, which you write here. You can't go back on yourself, that one's already permanently labelled. So now you look for the smallest of 21, 28, 15 and 23, it's clearly this one. So this is number 5 and it's got a permanent value of 13 now. So we can't go down to another one that's permanently labelled or back to that. So we go 13 and 14 is 27, 13 and 7 is 20. And now you look at these three here. The smallest out of 21, 27 and 20 is 20. So you make this number 6 and you call it 20. So you go everywhere from this one. You can't go back to two permanently labelled. So you just go 20 at 6 is 26, 20 at 9 is 29. You look for the smallest out of these, 26, 29 and 21. 21 is the smallest. So this is going to be number 7, which you're going to give it 21. Now it's really important here. You go every place you can from here. You can't go back to a permanent, but you can go back to one that's not labelled. And 21 at 4 is 25, which would be here. So it's really important. Students miss out on that one there because they look forward all the time. 21 and 6 is also 27. 21 and 10 is also 31. You look for the smallest of 25, 27 and 31 is 25. That's number 8 and it's 25. Now you can't go back to a permanent, so 25 at 1 would be 26, that's the only place you can go. The smallest of these two is 26, so that's number 9 at 26. And then from here, the only place you can go to a, a, a temporary one is up here, and that would give you to 30. So the next one must be number 10, and this is 30. So we've used Dijkstra's algorithm, but let's make sure we get full marks. We must state our path and its length. Now, you state a path by going backwards from your end point. So how did I get to 30? 30 going back 4 is 26, so I must have taken that route there because 30 back 10 is not 20, for example. 26 back 1 gives me 25. 25 back uh, 4 gives me 21, so it must be back here. 21 back 9 gives me 12. 
12 back 4 gives me 8, and 8 back 8 gives me the 0. So that's how I know which is my path. So my path is S to A to D, so S, A, D, G, E, H, so G, E, and H, and then T, like that. And the length is this number here, which is 30. And let's look at the, the question, it's 30 miles. So do write your unit, so write 30 miles. Okay, the next part, it says, on a particular day, Liz must include F in her route. So she must, must, must include F here in her route. Find the shortest path from S to T that includes F and state its length. So she must include F here. So the way I would think about doing this, if she must include F, I would ask myself the following question. I would say, how can I get to F the quickest? And then how can I get from F to T the quickest? So, because Dijkstra, th these numbers tell you how to get from S to here the quickest, this one here, 20, must be the quickest I can get to F in. So, 20 must be the quickest I can get to F in. And what route must that be? Well, let's just see how we would get there in uh, 20. Um, this would be an example, 9, 4, and 7. That would certainly be equal um, to 20. Uh, is there another route we can find? Um, well, I I think that's probably the quickest. So there, S, C, B, and F would be the quickest there. So S, C, B to F. And how do I get from F to T in the quickest possible way? Well, is it nine and four, which is 13? Or is it six and one and then four? So it's obviously six, one, and then four. So it would be to E to H to T. So it would be E to H to T. Now this bit here took us 20. So that bit there took us 20. And this bit here, six and one is seven and four is 11. So this bit here must be 11. So I would say 31 miles is my correct answer for that.